good afternoon all dear learners good afternoon respected divedi sir respected bhavesh sir today sir will take class on information security block 3 chapter 2 and unit 2 and 3 that is a cyber crime <coughs> cyber crime and hacking okay so i request divedi sir to start the session thank you sir please go okay. discussing the last unit of information security that is uh, information security privacy and ethics in last class we discussed uh, about the inf uh, the importance of uh, information and uh, we realized the importance of information um, through different examples we we usually um, keep most of our sensible information in internet in different servers uh, in the internet uh, also i provided uh, examples of uh, your uh, email applications where you are uh, storing your sensible uh, identity informations about your identity and also we um, uh, looked at the examples of uh, some e-commerce applications where you are using your banking you know transactions for you know sell itself uh, for purchasing of uh, goods from different e-commerce websites so we realize that how it is important to to secure our information because we we generally save all the information most of our information in online platforms in different servers so we discussed uh, some information security measures like um, identity management system then uh, we discussed about that is authentication management system we discussed about the firewalls uh, and the intrusion detection system then antivirus as an intrusion detection system just introductory part we discussed about the different uh, counter measures for information security there also we discussed about the encryption that uh, in this information security course you have largely emphasized on the encryption technologies that is public key and private key encryptions algorithms we have uh, already uh, studied about this encryption technology which is a part of information security mechanisms or the you can say it is the you know tool in order to hide your information from being accessed from an unknown one so it means you generally uh, Uh, you know send the coded information rather than the original information so anyone can if can access your information in the transit or in the path then he can only get the coded information that's why you are studying this encryption technology some public key encryption technology you will use two keys and in private key technology where you only use one single key you have already discussed all these things so this is also this encryption is also a counter measure for the information security then we discussed about uh, the privacy aspect of the information why you you uh, study three important concepts like uh, trade secret and uh, you know copyrights and patents so these trade secrets copyrights and patents are the mechanism to to maintain the privacy of your data information or your inventions or your artificial you know design or artistic works so these copyrights are you know uh, responsible to keep privilege for your for your artistic work for your any architectural or design work already we have discussed about the copyrights 
Okay, and uh, patents are really uh, providing you the authorization for your inventions. So if you have developed any product, then you may get, uh, you may file a patent for your product so that you will get the sole authorization to uh, distribute the copy of the product or to to open up the process in which you have developed the product. So you can file a patent for that in order to maintain a privacy right or a protection uh, or your intellectual property right. Okay. So now to also we we have discussed about the uh, some some technology related to uh, cyber crime. So we were discussing about the cyber crime and uh, cyber terrorism. Today we are going to complete this section and eventually it will end up this uh, CSP you know 12 course that is information security. So today is the last class for that and we are going to discuss about uh, cyber crime and cyber terrorism. So already I mentioned in the last like uh, session that cyber crime is something which uh, which involve a computing device like your mobile phone, tablets, personal digital assistants, like devices, or uh, these devices may be used as a tool for any computer crime, or these devices may be act as a victim for any you know crime. So either these devices, computing devices, can be used for uh, executing a crime or this device can be victimized for executing a crime so this is what cyber crime is about it means either you can use a computer to for a criminal activity or you may victimize a computer for stealing information like you may steal the trade secrets for 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 a company where the trade secrets are residing or st stored at uh, you know some servers or some computers so there you are you you know there you are, the computer is a victim and you are stealing information from that computer. So cyber crime involves all those things where a computing device or internet or network is involved for a criminal activity. We have already discussed a lot of concepts last class, the cyber stalking, where you can you know, threaten a person or you can harass a person by sending emails. It means you just, just for an example, you can see, you can say that, you can see that meeting me along at 9 p.m. or else I will upload your photographs on the internet. This is a threatening mail. Somebody uh, is mailing to another person in order to harass or threaten him. You do the things for me, otherwise I will upload your photographs which I have with me or with my mobile phone. This act is called cyber stalking and it is prevalent nowadays. People are using you know different uh, you know uh, they are uh, taking you know snapshots of your private life and somehow they use that snapshots or your photographs while blackmailing something so this act is also on cyber stalking and it is a uh, cyber crime now this phishing already we discussed in the last session that phishing is a is a prevalent nowadays and it is a common attack and phishing is for identity theft means somebody will try you know he will get your email id your password your date of birth and your maybe uh, credit card details by sending a mail which seems to be coming from a valid user okay or authenticated user or the user which you trust okay for example this google verification so this mail is is uh, is come in the name of google verification so a user may think that this mail is uh, has been sent from Google. So he may uh, and uh, he's asking for such information like full name, email ID, password, profession, year of birth, country. So this full name and year of birth, country has may not have meaning, but this constitute a complete form blank of stops. But the important thing is to get your email ID is not also a concern password. The password is an important thing he want to take from you so that he is just uh, making such uh, form kind of things and he want to uh, steal your password by sending a phishing mail. These mails are known, uh, popularly known as phishing mail. Basically, this phishing also, uh, they may also send a mail with an attachment. Oh, okay, if you open that attachment, 
it may be directed towards a fake website like this or through that attachment they may insert a virus or worms or trojans into your system so basically those are called phishing uh, you know attacks where uh, you know uh, you can fool a user by sending some email address uh, by sending some email you can fool a user by sending such kind of email that we have discussed uh, now so you may get your uh, personal uh, you know identification number a phishing can be done with uh, the trademark as well means some sometimes uh, somebody may uh, construct a website by just changing the slightly changing the name of the website what, what the meaning is there for example you are a frequent user of facebook okay so if a similar uh, you know uh, application has been developed and he want to uh, make a publication of his application or publicity the uh, he want to make publicity of his application he may get a similar spelling as if it looks like facebook means it may write f a c c e b o o k or f a c e b o k so the we as a user generally were not concerning about spelling nowadays just we're concerning what is the look and feel of a website if the look and feel is same if uh, the facebook is written in blue color basically so if somehow as some silly change is being done to the spelling of facebook we cannot generally catch that thing if we look at very intensely then only you can catch the thing that yeah actually it is written facebook and the url for facebook is f a c e b o k dot com okay but somebody may design a website in the name f a c e b o k facebook dot com so you may be you know direct towards that site in you know and if the look and feel of that site is just uh, like uh, facebook then you may think that you are using you may think that yeah i am using facebook but eventually you are using somebody you know something looking similar to facebook but not exactly the facebook okay you may relate it again i am giving an example that is suppose a brand you are you know the very popular brand of shoes is reebok so reebok is is uh, brand cost is more than 2000 rupees but you will find the same reebok at the cost of 500 rupees in footpaths how it is possible because that 500 rupees reebok boot is is a fishing you know it's it's not the exact reebok if you look at the spelling correctly or the logo correctly you will see that it is not the exactly reebok that the brand is not exact the spelling there is a slight you know change in the spelling but the look and feel is you know same but spelling is slightly changed so this is also a phishing okay so there are many ways people you know th things are uh, running in the internet there are many ways uh, people are trying to uh, fish the you know the users in order to promote their products okay in order to promote their websites in case of websites they try they try to promote their websites sometimes phishing is also done in order to uh, you know uh, for example another example which has uh, is a recent uh, attack has been done in iran you know iran cyber army is a, is the popular cyber army in the world iranian cyber army and israel cyber army are the very popular cyber army what they had, they did recently that uh, they have made a similar you know um, website as if sbi.com our most popular you know banking uh, uh, you know is sbi now state bank of india and the site is sbi.co.in okay so they have made a pop, you know similar uh, url they have designed a website just look similar to sbi.com so so they uh, so while while we are uh, typing in the google for online banking in sbi we directly type sbi online and whatever the first you know in the first uh, uh, you know tag which is uh, appearing we just click on that without even going much detail onto that first tab we are just click on the first link which is appearing in the uh, google bar so if if we, if something you know uh, some spelling mistake occurs we actually generally ignore that thing we don't go with we do not look uh, in a deep sense but uh, some of the first link we believe that this is the valid sbi link and we are very casual and we click on that link if 
by using search engine optimization is a technique in computer science in order to uh, put your you know link at the top of the google search okay so if you, if you look at the google search you will see that thousands or millions of documents have been searched and there are at the uh, bottom end of the google you will see that is some tab bot uh, buttons are there one two three four ten like that buttons so one button the first one which is appearing at the top of the list of the google search bar that is one the second top is coming under the second you know button so likewise so if if you have employed a search engine optimization then your link will be appearing at the top of the google search bar that is what search engine optimization is a technique and it is a different technology okay which is used to uh, uh, how to make your link or your url to add at the top of the google search bar or any uh, search engine bar okay so if anyone is applying that search engine optimization techniques and eventually his link coming at the very first of the google search bar and if it is the fake sbi you know uh, sbi url which is looking at very similar to the sbi url then when you click on the uh, you know login button if you put your user id and password okay only to catch your user id and password they may create a very similar you know interface which is looking like the exact sbi interface then when you look you know type your user id and password and click on the submit button only they will find that they will show you uh, the 404 page not found because their work is done once you type your user id and password the user id and password you have typed will be sent to their server so they get your user id and password the work is done then you will realize after so you know watching that 404 page not found that oh i guess i am not in the right place i have clicked on a different link which is not meant for the sbi so this is, act is also called phishing okay so this is a very dangerous attack nowadays and it is uh, people are you know trapped only due to their careless nature and phishing is done every day with us so we need to carefully while we are accessing to a website while we are searching for a website in the google we need to very care we need to look at the exact url we need to see whether the spelling is correct or not so don't go with the look and feel of the things because nowadays uh, you know the computer programs and applications are designed based on the look and feel and people are recognizing the application based on the look and feel that's why a child who doesn't know who do not know about uh, uh, the spelling of a thing he can easily capture what is this because that uh, you know icons icons are you know he can understand he or she can understand the children a child can understand the icon and through that icon he can click he can know who, who, what is the whatsapp link what is the facebook link what is the youtube by that icon the children are guessing that application and they are using that application okay so applications the app developers are very much concerned about the look and feel of the things but as a user but basically well we are dealing with some you know uh, uh, money transactions uh, example online transactions if you're doing then we have to look at the exact spelling and exact url we, we shouldn't go with the look and feel of that uh, website or of that url otherwise we'll be suffering in the phishing attack okay now i've discussed about computer vandalism and spamming also i have discussed that is unwanted messages which are coming to our email which is filling up our mailbox thanks to the gmail that they have a spam folders they are filtering the spams that's why we are we are not bothering about the spam nowadays but spamming is you know something where the informations are coming from an uh, unknown sources we don't know exactly the source of that you know mails and basically for promoting a business uh, you know for promoting a product people are you know sending you some spam message is a message which is uh, sent to a group of people so the recipients are many for this okay so gmail has the provision to filter out the spamming message so they have a different folder for that automatically when a message coming from a unknown source and a message which is intended for uh, around 100 more than uh, 50 people or 60 people then they treated it as spam so they filled it out okay so spamming is also a threat uh, nowadays it's also a cyber crime we shouldn't do such kind of activities unnecessary activity otherwise you will be 
uh, treated as a cyber, you know, this act is treated as a cyber crime. Also, we have discussed uh, last class about cross-site scripting, where some malicious content will be, you know, <clears throat> uh, injected into a web server, basically a website. Basically, a website consists of some client-side coding and some server-side coding. Client-side coding means the things which are run at the client side. Basically, client side means at our web browser. So the things which is running at our web browser is, is inside the client side coding. And the things which are running at the web server, these are called the server side scripting or server side coding. So a web browser basically is a component which is made up of a part of uh, server side scripting and a part of client side scripting. So if you know a malicious content is in injected into the part of the client side script okay malicious content in the sense that the content which is or the piece of code which is meant for any malicious activity means malicious activity means just for your understanding i'm telling what what can be done in in our browser what can what can a person remotely can done with our browser basically our browser you know stores cookies okay cookies are what cookies are you know a piece of code which uh, who is always try to track the session record session as i have discussed already in the osi model the session layer its work is to maintain a session while we are uh, you know under the communication with any web server or any you know web application then a session is established okay you might have experienced the session uh, expired in case of if you are a you know if you are using rctc site or if you are using sbi online sbi site you might have encountered if your ideal not doing for one minute or uh, or you know the the timing is varies nowadays for different server if you are ideal for one minute in case of irctc then it will show you a message that the session has expired you need to again log in to your session so same thing in sbi also if you are not doing anything for 50 seconds then he will send you a message that your session has expired means once you log into a particular application then a session is established and what are the actions you are doing is captured inside a session cookie okay so cookie if a browser is you know enabled with cookies then he can store all the informations about different sessions you are maintaining with different web servers or different websites so if any malicious content is you know injected towards the client side script of a particular web website then that client side you know that malicious content or malicious code may capture the cookies information that the browser store okay so if he can get the cookies information then that cookies uh, that uh, session information may be sent to the remote you know, uh, you know, person who is remotely accessing your uh, that website means the hackers can get, you know, get know uh, get to know about the uh, cookies information. Like your, yeah, they may track that. What are the websites you are visiting, and what are the actions you are doing with that websites? Okay, so he can track your activities, what you are doing, your history. He can track your browser history. He can know that what you are doing and what are the websites you are visiting. So cookies has these own advantage and disadvantage. Somebody may use cookies for knowing, uh, for example, you know, for a good purpose, but somebody may know uh, the, or somebody may inject cookie for a bad purpose. Good purpose in the sense, for example, uh, in a website, every website nowadays are, are uh, using cookies in order to track the information, in order to track uh, who are the visitors you know who are visiting our website basically if you see a website the number of visitors is also at the right corner of a website the number of visitors your uh, it, it is displaying okay so the number of visitors is displaying because our website has a cookie who is keep track of the number of visitors you know information so that is one just example which we visualize that's why i have tried to give but there are a number of you know cookies are there where you can also uh, you know he can store that what are the activities done by that user or by that visitor so how many pages you have browsed what the information you have downloaded everything in you know 
uh, uh, save or stored by that cookie. So it is for the good purpose. Suppose I am a, I am running a business, uh, you know, website. Suppose I am the owner of the Facebook. So I inject a cookie in my website to understand what users actually want. So when a user is browsing in my in, in browsing through that uh, Flipkart.com, so what user actually wants? Ha <laughs> ha. So I can you know uh, design my websites. I can design a user-friendly web website if I know what actually user wants, and I can know only the objective of user uh, only through his browsing habit. Okay, so if a user is searching something in my website, then what type of search he is doing? So I will, uh, if I track his search record, then I can know. Oh, okay, so this type of information is you no know, user is searching. So in that way, I can design, I can change the you know interface of my website. I can change the look and feel structure of my website. I can you know try to put such information which are really required for the user, and I can delete the information which are unnecessary or which are not required by the user. So I can track the user activity in order to improve the quality of my website and in order to improve the user friendliness of my website that's why i inject a cookie in my website basically all the web developers in all the websites they try to use cookies in this positive intent in order to develop in order to develop the quality of their website as for the user convenience okay so this is that is what the positiveness of uh, uh, injecting a cookie inside a uh, web browser or any you know, sorry uh, you know website or any web applications but the negative impact is that if the cookies are maintaining or cookies are tracking the information inside a browser, then if somehow as a hacker, if I will inject a cookie, that means if I inject a cookie and if I make a remote connection with that cookie, then I also as a third party sitting at the remote location, I will also track what that user is doing. So that is what the negative part of a cookie means a remote look at a remote location a third party all can also track the activity of a user by injecting a cookie and establishing a remote connection with that cookie that's what this cross site scripting is all about cross site scripting means trying to uh, the uh, a, a third party or a hacker trying to uh, you know uh, know the activity of a user by injecting a malicious you know contained like a uh, you know in the uh, website and uh, while the web browser will execute that malicious content as per the client side scripting okay so he can know what are the activities being done by the uh, you know uh, that user okay by searching its browser history by searching its uh, the cookies data which of which i have already uh, stored by the uh, web browser so this cross site scripting is is nothing but injecting a malicious content like a cookie type of code into a uh, into the client side script of a uh, website or any web page and taking off and accessing the what the uh, browsing habit of or the browsing history of a user uh, uh, by sitting at a remote location okay this type of attacks are very common nowadays already we discussed about this web jacking which is done by which is a cyber terrorism also i will see show you that uh, okay uh, so web jacking means the here the hacker can access to a website of an organization and either blocks it or modify it to severe to serve political economical and social interest basically if uh, a group of hackers belonging to a different country is uh, trying to hack a website of belong which is belong which belongs to a different country okay then this type of act is called web jacking okay this is an example which is shown that i saw you know a, a group of hackers from iran they hacked a, a railway website of pakistan and after hacking that website they have displayed such message and they have displayed their own uh, their country's flag okay so this act is web jacking which is common nowadays so a group of hackers of different countries are playing with each other they try to uh, you know uh, try to do smart works with each other and okay so this uh, battle is going on between the cyber armies of different uh, uh, you know countries and this is called the web jacking 
already we have discussed about this DOS and DDoS attack, which are very common to uh, to interrupt the service of a server. So DOS means denial of service. In order to interrupt a service of a particular server, we use DOS. DOS is uh, not common nowadays because uh, of due to some you know changes in the security measures. So DDoS attack is common. That is distributed denial of service attack. So if uh, this is an attack of interruption, attack to interruption, or this is interruption, which is attack to availability principle of the information security. Availability means uh, the information security principle ensure that if there is a you know if there is a source or if there is a server, then the server must be available always. Okay, so nobody can interrupt the service from that server. Okay, so if there is a legal user, authorized user then the authorized user should able to get the service always from that authorized server. Okay, if any interruption occurs, then that is called a DDoS attack. That is denial of service or distributed denial of service. So basically, uh, that uh, suppose this is victim is a server. Okay, uh, suppose I want to down, you know, down this uh, ARCTC server for the railway ticket booking. Basically, people are doing like that. Suppose I want to down this uh, railway booking server, ARCTC server. And these handles are two hackers. Okay, so earlier what happened? There is no need a group of hackers. There is only a single hacker who is able to down this IRCT server only by what uh, submitting a fake user ID and passwords. So if you submit continuously fake user ID and password to this IRCT server, that IRCT server will busy or uh, in you know uh, servicing the request of this uh, fake user ID and password. Because once you put up user and password, then there's some background operations, uh, you know, is being done, you know, to check your user ID and password, whether uh, you are a valid user or not. So he need to check the database. And once you find that the user ID is not valid, he will generate a report and send it to the user. So it, it busy in, in uh, you know, processing the fake user ID and passwords. So in that case, you the the ha hacker has the unlimited capacity of sending user id and passwords now this is as the time passes the security uh, you know group uh, professionals change the rule that and they limited limited uh, the number of id and password you you can send now nowadays most of these you know uh, sites they allow only three fake user ID and password. Once you, you know, provide uh, three fake email ID and password, incorrect user ID and password, then for some times, they will block you. They will not allow you to submit another the fourth one. So they may either, uh, some, some sites may block you for 24 hours. Some sites may block you for one hour. Some, some sites may block you for five minutes. It depends on their business logic. So they may block you for some time. So that what happened, the server will not, uh, you know, uh, interrupt his service to the valid users. If a valid user is in the queue, okay, so at least he can serve this valid user. He cannot, uh, you know, busy in serving a fake user or an invalid user, or, or, or he, he may not interrupt his service to a valid user. That's why when three fake, after serving three fake ID and user ID and password, he will not allow this to uh, send another user a fake user ID and password. So he has to stop for one hour, 24 hours or whatever as per the business logic. So this limitations, again, hackers think that, okay, so you limited our capacity. Now we group together. Now two hackers are now grouped together. They try to send user ID and password. If two hackers will group together, then the limit exceeds to six. So six also they have uh, they they you know uh, they also that the six is not sufficient for us because uh, the server is now high capacity server is processing speeds has also increased so six fake user ID also not solving our you know hacking ability so what we can do we can create a cyber army how can we create a cyber army now we can compromise the systems of different users. We can remotely access to the systems. So if, okay, let me uh, control uh, one, two, three, four, four system. Let you control four system. Now we will remotely access this system. 
and now we compile this system on behalf of us they will send fake user in and password i guess you can understand now so they these two hackers remotely access these systems okay so now four and four eight systems are now putting fake user in and password this is for an example i am saying that eight systems but they may these hackers may take over or take control over more than eight they may even 100 system or 1000 system they are using for this ddos attack oh, if they really want to interrupt the service from a server or or they really want to break the service or trash a server if they, that is their target then they may compromise more than 100 systems at a time so how they can compromise just they, they just just uh, access these systems remotely by injecting some trojans we will study in the later courses how you can access how you can control a system remotely by injecting trojans like you might have heard about ransomware attack in the recent you know past year 2019 there's an attack called ransomware one cry virus attack one cry virus attack was a was an attack where, where the hacker injected trojan remotely and he locked the computer by just injecting a trojan and he can only unlock the computer but because he knows the uh, encryption technique decryption technique he encrypted all the files of that computer okay and he has the key he has the key to decrypt that files that's why he the all the computers were locked okay so ransomware wanna cry was uh, was a trojan okay so basically hackers insert or inject trojan and they get a remote access through that trojan okay so somehow if a hacker will remotely compromise these systems then they use this system in order to you know what uh, uh, break down a service of a server or a they may break down if they want to you know uh, attack a router also they may do similar type of cyber army okay so these compromised systems are called zombie computers okay this zombie means zombie is a word if a system is compromised remotely by a hacker then that system is called a zombie computer okay so these are now zombie and this is called a cyber army okay so this is how the simple architecture of a di distributed denial of service attack also we discussed about spoofing you might have uh, studied about spoofing that is uh, uh, what the spoofing means uh, uh, just a, a change of identity or you can say it is a masquerading attack where a person, uh, an entity will uh, take the identity of another entity or a valid entity and he can use that identity in order to uh, send a message to a valid user okay so jo yahan pe hackers hote hain yahan pe kya karte hain wo apna khud ki identity ko hide karke ek legitimate user ka identity ko leke wo ek legitimate user ke sath talk karte hain for example yahan pe just 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 see this example here what happens here somebody is mischieved by by sending a mail from bill gates okay so this rohit is a person who is mischieved actually by this uh, hacker rohit is thinking that the mail is coming from the valid mail that is you, you can see in the you know header the mail is uh, seems to be coming from uh, bill gates okay so so uh, he's uh, uh, replying to bill gates he's uh, thinking that actually the message is coming from bill gates so hacker what happened he may you know this this is the header of a email okay so this from you know if you change the from tag this is the address which is given so if you somehow you can uh, change this address okay just means change this address means you have to just modify this header part actually the actual source is you know uh, from where the mail is come but you can if you can change this header part somebody may uh, in a first loop somebody may confuse and somebody may uh, think that actually the message is coming from this email address so this is called header spoofing also so header spoofing means what it is a process of changing the header information of an email so that its original source is not identified and appears to an individual uh, at the receiving end that the email has been originated from source other than the original source 
मीन्स यहाँ पे लग रहा है कि ये बिल गेट से आया यहाँ पे हम इसकी जो एक्चुअल मेल एड्रेस है अगर हम सेटिंग में जाके चेंज चेक करते हैं तो एक्चुअल मेल एड्रेस हमको पता होता है पर हमारा जी मेल क्या करता है यूजर फ्रेंडलीनेस के लिए वो क्या करता है हेडर में ये टू सब फ्रॉम सब दिखा देता है बट इस हेडर इंफॉर्मेशन को कोई इजीली मॉडिफाई कर पाए इट्स इट्स अ वेरी इजी टास्क ओके सो रिमोटली कोई भी हेडर इंफॉर्मेशन को मॉडिफाई इजीली कर देगा और किसी को मिसचीफ कर सकता है इट मींस ओनली टू मॉडिफाई ओनली टू मॉडिफाई दिस हेडर इंफॉर्मेशन वन कैन इजीली यू नो मिसचीफ अ थिंग That's why जो बैंकिंग ट्रांजेक्शन में जो बैंक के एम्प्लॉज होते हैं वो ज्यादातर हेडर पे बिलीव नहीं करते हैं वो सेटिंग में जाके एक्चुअल ई मेल एड्रेस को देखते हैं ओके सो दिस इज अ वेरी वेरी ब्रूटल टास्क विच इज डॉन बाई ई मेल स्कूफिंग एंड दिस ई मेल स्कूफिंग आर बेसिकली डॉन ऑन दी फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूशन लाइक बैंकिंग और एनी थर्ड पार्टीज हु आर यू नो फैसिलिटेटिंग द बैंकिंग यू नो एप्लीकेशन लाइक पेटीएम में हो गया भीम ऐप में हो गया वहां पे ये ईमेल स्पूफिंग स्टफ्स को सेटिंग पार्ट नॉट जस्ट यू नो यू शुड लुक एट द मेल बाई जस्ट लुकिंग एट दैडर पार्ट रदर यू गो टू दिंग एंड चेक दिन ऑफ दैट मैसेज ओके सो ईमेल स्पूफिंग में होता है कोई भी अपना मेल का हेडर को चेंज करके ही कैन स्पूफ इट सो इट इज अ क्रिमिनल एक्टिविटीज ओके सो देर लॉट ऑफ यू नो साइबर क्राइम इज लिस्ट इज मेनी वी विल डिस्कस सम ऑफ क्राइम वाइल विल गो ऑन द नेटवर्क साइबर सिक्योरिटी कोर्स लॉट ऑफ क्राइम वील डिस्कस लॉट मेनी अदर्स लाइक सेशन हाइकिंग विल डिस्कस सम इन साइडर अटैक्स वील डिस्कस देन मेन इन द मेडल अटैक वी विल डिस्कस Okay, so there are a lot of uh, things we need to discuss in our next session. This is just a beginning. I want to just give you a flavor of the cyber crimes. Okay, now come to cyber terrorism. Basically, cyber terrorism uh, involves a crime against a nation. Okay, this type of crimes are targeted towards a nations or group of uh, nations following same ideology. Okay, the execution of politically motivated hacking operations intended to cause grave harm that is resulting in either loss of life or severe economic loss or both so jab whenever a cyber crime is happening with a single person basically it is called cyber crime if the cyber crime is providing an impact on a group of person or a country okay or a, a religion group okay then it is called a cyber terrorism that is the basic difference only okay so all that things we have discussed as a cyber crime can be a cyber terrorism if a group of person is affected with that activities okay i have given you a list of cyber terrorism examples this list is given from, i have take this list from the wikipedia you can go i will provide the link or you may take this slide to know what cyber crime is in 1996 the first uh, you know cyber terrorism was identified where uh, there's a, there was a movement running for white supremacist in the america uh, there is a movement running for white supremacist movement okay so the activist of this white supremacist movement they disabled a uh, isp which is belong to mit mit is uh, one of the top universities in america so this activist of this white supremacist movement they hack one of the isp of belonging to this mit university okay and they try to provide a message that we can uh, you know by using your electronic media we can spread this movement across the america that was their you know threatening to the american government because mit is one of the uh, top university in america if the activist is somehow uh, you know hack the isp of a top university of america then the, they try to threaten the government that we can use your electronic devices to spread the this white supremacist movement so this is the first act reportedly uh, as a cyber terrorism the first cyber terror attack okay in recently you might have uh, heard that in 2000 i think 2008 or 19 there's a uh, you know attack for, to the uh, usa power grid system 
So for five minutes, the entire power grid network of USA was hacked. Means nothing was worked. It was being stopped. Its operation was uh, stopped for five minutes, and it, the attack was done by this ISI group. Okay. So uh, in similar in 1998, some Tamil guerrillas attempted to disrupt Sri Lankan embassies by sending large volume of email. Okay, the embassy received 800 emails a day over a two-week period. The messages read, we are the internet black tigers and we are doing this to disrupt your communications. So this is an example of this DOS attack, I guess. Okay, so, means they are trying to deny the communication process. So in 1998, this Tamil gorillas have done a uh, uh, deed that means they they send 800 emails so that they they try to uh, uh, make the email server of the um, uh, sri lankan embassy busy okay so what what was the message given there the message read we are the internet black tigers and we are doing this to disrupt your communications intelligence authorities characterized it as the first known attack by terrorist against a country's computer systems so this is how you can you know identify a cyber terrorism a lot of example i have given i'll uh, share these slides with you you can go on reading that different type of you know attacks are being reported in the news uh, or in the you know different uh, sections or you may look at the uh, wikipedia also there are some recent attacks also i have uh, identified in 2013 the new york times reported on a pattern of cyber attacks against the u.s financial institutions believed to be investigated by Iran, as well as incidents affecting South Korean financial institutions that originated with the North Korean government. Okay, so you'll come to know about many, you know, cyber terrorism examples. It's a very important and useful links. As we're going to be the cybersecurity experts, if you are interested on the cybersecurity, if you're interested on the cyber world, then you must visit these websites. You know, it is very important websites that you are using nowadays Facebook regular basis. Okay, because you are very fond of uh, using Facebook and WhatsApp. So as a security professionals, I want, I recommend these websites, you daily, you daily visit these websites in order to enhance your understanding, your current affairs on the so, you know, cyber security rules and cyber security crimes, cyber security principles, and how different attacks are being, you know, it's a, it's an ocean. So every day a new attack is happening and every day some new rules and measures are, are happening. So in order to update yourself with the cyber security world, you have to visit this site. This is first site securitymagazine.com, then cywire.com, uh, then threadpost.com, wire.com, then the hackersnews.com, scmagazine.com, then this cybercrime.gov.in. This is a very important portal for you. This is for this portal belongs to Indian government. The Ministry of uh, Home Affairs have launched this cybercrime in order to book or in order to store uh, or keep all the cybercrime activities. If you have faced, if you are the victim of, you know, a cybercrime, okay, you may lodge a complaint in this portal, cybercrime.gov.in. So this portal you may use to lodge a complaint if you are a victim against the cyber crime. So Indian, you know, cyber specialist, cyber crime specialist or forensic specialist will definitely investigate into your matter. And if you visit this website, you will know that what are the cyber crimes, you know, reported in the India, in, in, in India, in different parts of the India. So cybercrime.gov.in is a portal where you can lodge your complaint if you are a victim of cyber crime. So these are the use, very useful links. You'll every day if you visit, you will get to know about new concepts in cyber security and security related issues. Okay. I'll share the slides. You will come to know about all these things. Okay. Now comes to the last part and the basics and introducing uh, introduction of hacking. Okay. So basically, <clears throat> this uh, hacking means the act of finding possible entry points in a computer system or network to enter into the system. Unauthorized access to a system either to harm the system or to steal sensitive information available on the system. 
basically in the nutshell i can say hacking means unauthorized access to a system if you are not authorized to if you if you have no, no, no authorization to access to a system and if you are trying to access this system with at a remote location okay then it, the, this act is called hacking okay then why hacking why do people involved in such activities to be your surprise hacking is done just for fun so these are you know i have outlined some reasons of hacking one of the reason and the very first reason is fun because hacking starts with uh, the school children basically the uh, school children of america they started this activity called hacking and uh, for your information i can say that 90% of today's hacker are nothing but the school children and the plus 2 dropouts so hacking is mostly done by the the age group of uh, uh, 12 to 20 this is the age group where people are doing the hacking task and after 20 people most of the people are in the security domain not in the hacking domain okay so a student may interest to have fun on snooping other email basically in america students used to snoop their teachers mail or their principals mail okay or by fun they may go into or they may access their mail of their friends or their you know parents so this is fun they started this hacking task or they started accessing uh, others you know uh, private information out of fun and so fun is one of the reason why people do hacking basically for fun you know in recent years uh, the students of bpud university they hacked their university website and they inject some you know uh, some funny statements over that website that's for fun there's nothing they they didn't get anything because uh, the, this website do not belong to doesn't belong to a financial you know institution so there is no financial uh, you know crunch happened but out of fun they have done that they have hacked the website and they inject some you know funny information on that site okay so fun is one of the reason okay then so off some people try to be smarter than other as a computer literate okay so for so off they also do this or they involve themselves in this hacking activity because they so off that yeah i am i am a computer literate i know much more thing than you that's why i am from remotely i can access to your system or i can without knowing your password i can easily crack your system password and i can use your system that is real truth okay so off is one of the reason why people are doing hacking then bad habit it's a really bad habit for the crackers cracker means what the cracker is something or some uh, somebody who try to crack the passwords okay so one security system to steal data some people are by in born they have the bad habit to steal info in our cyber world also there are some crackers who try to you know test security system to steal data and it is due to their bad habit so bad habit is one of the reason why people do hacking then business rivalry basically the insider attack are due to this you know uh, business rivalry i'm oh, sorry it's, it's not insider attack business rivalry means you know to steal the trade secret already in the previous session we discussed about the trade secret suppose a company want to steal the business logic of another company then he may employ some hackers you know to steal some sensitive business logic or business plans from its rival for example if amazon.com and flipkart.com are the two business rival in the online shopping sites okay so they are the tycoons of the online uh, you know shopping sites so if flipkart wants to know what are the business you know policies and business plan of amazon.com then he may employ a group of hackers and try to steal information from this uh, from the business servers or from the internal servers of the amazon.com so for business rivalry also hacking is being done to know the competitors business strategies then come to personal revenge most of the insider attacks are due to personal revenge insider attacks means a person who is who was an employee of that institution 
he know the security strategies of that institution or organization he know maybe he know the personal you, you know in you know, the institutional user id and passwords okay but he is a disgruntled employee means he is somehow unhappy with the you know company strategy or company you know the the owners of the company or the ceo of the company somehow he has some you know uh, he has developed some rivalry with that uh, group of that you know that company so in order to uh, uh, you know uh, to take personal revenge he may uh, uh, hack the systems because he he was an employee and he know the user id and password either he may give that user id and password to some hackers or he may use that user id and password uh, from from any other computers and he, he try to steal the information from that company okay then money laundering is also being done by hacking okay money laundering means to gain the credit card details okay basically they may send you email and uh, they may phishing mail they may send you a phishing mail they may check the uh, they try to take the credit card details okay and they may use that details to uh, to steal the money from your accounts or they transfer the money from other accounts okay then cheat cheating is being done also basically the broker may deny a promise made for his customer by email so there are a lot of cheating is being done through email okay so they may uh, uh, they may start a financial communication by email but at a later stage they may somehow delete that communication and later stage they may deny okay so this type of attacks are the attacks to non repudiation also so they may deny that i have made a communication okay so the communication system security principle must ensure this type of cheating activities but people are doing uh, you know uh, hacking the things in order to cheat okay then as we discussed just recently that uh, uh hacking may be done for the terrorist attack okay a spy may steal some you know military important military you know uh, information of a country so hacking is also done for this terrorist attack or terrorism then types of hackers echo okay actually basically this hacking terms uh, uh came from uh, late uh, 70s and hackers are those in in late 70s the definition was something different okay the definition of hackers in late 70s was different what is the you know who are the hackers in that area in that arena hackers are those who seek knowledge to understand how systems operate how they are designed and attempt to play with the systems means a uh, person who are computer literate who know how the computers operate how they are designed and attempt to play with the systems jo pehle computer literate hote the ki in the 1970s mein computer were uh, computers uh, were at at his uh, at their early stage okay so in that time who the person who are very interested on computer they are called hackers because they have interest to know how the computer operate how actually they are designed okay after knowing how the computer operate and how they are designed this hackers attempt to play with the systems okay so they are they were called hackers but it is a positive intent so they were these hackers are actually they were given a lot of respect in late uh, late 1970s because they are the person who know about the computer operations and the computer design okay but they used their this you know knowledge in a bad purpose then only that's why the hackers are treated as criminals nowadays but based on the intention of the hackers if hacking is being done in a positive intent then they are called the white hat hackers or ethical hackers so based on the intention of the hackers they can be classified broadly as white hat hackers black hat hackers and gray hat hackers this is the very you know broad classification okay so white hat hackers means what they are the hackers who explore the vulnerabilities of the systems with the permission of the owner okay so they may hack a system but with the permission of the owner 
okay and why do they actually hack a system in order to explore the vulnerabilities of the systems okay we will discuss about this what is vulnerabilities which basically vulnerability means the weaknesses of a system okay is there any possible entry points so that anyone can access to the system this is one of the weakness this is called a vulnerability is there a software which is out of dated okay this is a vulnerability means the software which is running on our system must be updated if there is a outdated software then it is a vulnerable okay so any any you know uh, hacker can easily get into or easily get access to that outdated software so this is a vulnerability so this is exposed point okay so any exposed point where there is a chance that a third party remotely can access to our system it is called a vulnerability or it may also called a entry point to our system so explore the vulnerabilities of the system with the permission of the owner the person who is doing this task is called a white hat hacker so legal way of hacking so legal so a white hat hacker is uh, you know do hacking in a legal way intention is to enhance the security of the system use the knowledge of good cause ye jo statement hai ye hum agle slides mein dekhenge elaborate karenge ki what is actually that intention is to enhance the security of the system okay now come to black hat hackers black hat hackers kya hota hai jo ki hum hackers bolte hain jisko hum hackers bolte hain aur jisko hum uh, cyber criminals bolte hain means what unauthorized access to a system for either harming the system's operation damaging the applications delete or modify the data or steal data so illegal way of hacking use of the knowledge for harmful cause jo yahan pe humne hackers ka definition padha tha jo ki knowledge se hote hain jo ki jante hain ki computer operate kaise karta hai computer kaise design hua hai then wo janne ke baad wo computer ke sath play karte hain so this knowledge ko agar good cause mein use kiya jaye in order to enhance the security of the system then it is called white hat hackers if this knowledge is being used to uh, put some harm on the system to steal data to modify data to delete data then this illegal use or illegal use of uh, your knowledge okay computer knowledge is called or the users who actually uh, they use the their knowledge in order to harm a computer system is called a black hat hackers i come to gray hat hackers they are also a black hat hackers but their their intention is for socio economic reasons basically for if hacking is being done for any political reasons okay uh, then this is called a gray hat hackers means suppose two parties two political parties are rival to each other for example bjp and congress then if congress wants to know the business strategy of the bjp uh, sorry the political strategy of the bjp government then he may employ a group of hackers who can you know hack who can create a cyber army there are different type of uh, you know uh, things can be done for example you may create a cyber army to only uh, uh, you know post in the social media about the hatreds of the bjp government about the negativity of the bjp government about the failure of the bjp government about the complaints of the bjp government then it the, this group of hackers are nothing but the gray hat hackers so they use the social media in order to put some content which is against the government party same things may be done uh, by the bjp party they may put some negative you know content which which is uh, which which so uh, the negativity about the congress government so a cyber army is there they are with a cyber team and they are doing only the such kind of post they will post in that social media they use the social media uh, to post uh, the negativity of the opposite opposite party okay this is one example they may also they may employ a group of hacker for hacking the emails of the for example the personal emails of the ministers okay so they may try to only they, they do not want to modify the data okay so the, they they only listen the data they only li listen what is coming to the mails okay they access that thing and they drop it so this listening or this is called a passive attack where we are not modifying things 
only we are listening that if we are somehow access to a mail of our home minister for example if we listen that home minister is talking with what type of mails he is receiving what type of information he is sharing with mails okay and if i listen somehow if i access the information which is there which is you know communicating through mail then i can know what is their strategy okay and it is this this is an act of passive attack i'm not changing their information i'm only accessing that okay i'm not doing anything i'm not doing with anything with that mail but it is very dangerous because you cannot find out that that type of hackers who are listening to your things because if you don't do any activities then nobody can trace out that what you are doing we cannot even go to the event manager to look at what are the activities which are which are being done because if at all you are doing any activity only i will suspect that something is happening to my account or something like that if you are not doing any activity if you are only listening then it is very dangerous it's very hard to pick also who is listening to me because i cannot find now if i if at all if i find only can i lodge a complaint that somebody may is listening to my emails if i have not found anything that uh, yeah everything is okay so how do i know that somebody is listening to my now you know uh, emails or somebody may access to my emails is very difficult so gray hat hackers are like that they do hacking for fun socio political reasons so every parties now have a cyber army who are doing these type of things that i already just uh, discussed okay now come to need of ethical hacking okay this why that hacking is nothing but ethical hacking so why somebody explore the vulnerabilities of the systems with the permission of the owner okay so with the increased numbers and expanding knowledge of hackers combined with the growing number of system vulnerabilities and other unknowns the time will come when all computer systems are hacked or compromised in some way okay jaise jaise hackers का नंबर्स बढ़ रहा है और उनका नॉलेज बढ़ रहा है और हमारा सिस्टम्स ऑफिस में जितना पहले सिस्टम्स कम थे आदमी ज्यादा थे आज आदमी कम है सिस्टम्स ज्यादा है वी आर नॉट रिलाइंग ऑन द फिजिकल फाइल सिस्टम रेदर वी आर रिलाइंग ऑन द कंप्यूटर सिस्टम्स वी आर नॉट रिलाइंग ऑन द अलमिरास नाउ इट इज वी आर रिलाइंग ऑन द सर्वर्स नाउ इट इज ओके सो एज द नंबर्स इज यू नो एक्सपैंडिंग एज द नंबर्स ग्रोइंग नंबर्स मींस द सिस्टम्स नंबर्स आर ग्रोइंग so as the hackers numbers are growing so expanding knowledge of hackers combined with the growing number of system vulnerabilities jaise jaise system samara badhta hai to system ka vulnerabilities bhi badhta hai aur kafi sare aise bhi matlab jo unknown aise bhi aur bhi cheez hai jo security ka security ke liye concern hai we don't know still so vulnerabilities badhta hai aur kuch unknowns bhi badhte hain एक दिन ऐसा आएगा ऑफिस के सारे सिस्टम कॉम्प्रोमाइज हो जाएंगे और हैक हो जाएंगे जैसे हुआ था रेंसम वेयर वन अक्राइ वायरस अटैक में इफ वी डोंट कंसर्न अबाउट द सिक्योरिटी एस्पेक्ट देन वी कैन नॉट टेल दैट आवर डेटा इज सिक्योर्ड इन द सिस्टम और इन आवर सर्वर अगर आप देखोगे तो जब अलमिरा में डाटा रखते थे तो वहां पे ओनली चोरों का भय था बट नाउ इट इज हमारा चोर घुसेगा नहीं ऑफिस में लेकिन सारा डाटा चोरी करके ले जाएगा that is a very very big concern now it is okay so without having a physical appearance in the you know our office premises still all our data will be compromised or you know will be uh, theft by some by remote access of the hackers so it is very important of ethical hacking ethical hacking means penetration testing penetration testing ka matlab hai ki vulnerability assessment karna वनरेबिलिटी को स्टडी करना एंड वनरेबिलिटी टू फिक्स करना अगर हमारे सिस्टम में कुछ भी सिक्योरिटी रिलेटेड वनरेबिलिटीज है एंट्री पॉइंट से जो कि रिमोटली किसी को एक्सेस प्रोवाइड करता है तो उसको हमें फाइंड आउट करके उसको फिक्स करना है और इसको बोलते हैं पेंट्रेशन टेस्टिंग सो टू डिस्कवर एंड रिमूव वनरेबिलिटीज फॉर मेकिंग द सिस्टम सिक्योर इज नथिंग बट द पेंट्रेशन टेस्टिंग और एथिकल हैकिंग को भी पेनिट्रेशन टेस्टिंग बोला जाता है टू प्रोटेक्ट द सिस्टम्स फ्रॉम नॉन वनरेबिलिटीज एंड कॉमन हैकर्स अटैक सबसे जो द बेस्ट वे इज कीप योर सिस्टम शट डाउन देन यू मे प्रोटेक्ट योर थिंग्स बट वी कैन नॉट डू दैट वी कैन नॉट पुट आवर सिस्टम्स 
now shut down for everything so that's why we need the ethical hacking so ethical hacker karta kya hai an ethical hackers evaluation of a system security six answer to these basic question what can an intruder see on the target systems what can an intruder do with that information does anyone at the target notice the intruder's attempts or success what are you trying to protect what are you trying to protect against how much time effort and money are you willing to expend to obtain adequate protection jab bhi koi hetika lekar system ka security analysis report taiyar karta hai to wo penetration testing ke through aur ethical hacking ke through this questions generate karta hai aur unka answer bhi provide karke ek report banata hai jisko hum bolte hain security analysis and reporting to us reporting mein is questions ke bare mein discussion hota hai ki what can an intruder see on the target system intruder ka matlab hai third party aur hacker hacker wo target systems mein aapka jo systems hai wo kya dekh sakta hai what intruder can do with that information kya kar sakta hai us information ke sath does anyone at the target hamare machine mein koi bhi notice kar raha hai ki intruders ka attempts or success koi bhi notice ka matlab is there any intrusion detection system we employ is there any wire anti virus we employ is there any firewall we employ with is there any authentication system we employ okay then what are you trying to protect ab kya protect karna chahte ho is the information is the things that you are try to protect is very crucial or not agar wo information bahut hi crucial hai financial type of hai hamper kar sakta hai then it is you know worth of expending some money for the protection of that information so yahan pe ye bhi question important hai ki what are you trying to protect aap kya protect karna chahte ho information jo hai jisko aap protection dena chahte ho wo essential information hai ya nahi valid information hai ya nahi okay wo information se aapka agar wo information loss hota hai corrupt hota hai delete hota hai is pe aapki organization kya pe koi impact hota hai ya nahi that you need to also report in your security analysis and reporting part so what are you trying to protect agar aap kis se ye protection lena chahte ho what are you trying to protect against then very important how much time effort and money are you willing to expend to obtain adequate protection kitna samay paisa kharch karna chahte ho kyunki investment is also required if the data is sensitive then you may have a good investment otherwise you don't need to go for investment for ethical hacking purpose so ethical hackers ka overall goal kya hota hai hack your systems in a non destructive fashion enumerate vulnerabilities and if necessary proof to upper management that vulnerabilities exist apply results to remove vulnerabilities and better secure your systems so ethical hacking ka hamara pura ek session hai ek subject hai aapka white hat hacking usme hum different techniques padhenge ethical hacking ka different phases hum padhenge ethical hacking kaise kiya jata hai there we will discuss in a greater detail way so here with i will conclude this session today if you have any question now you may ask me thank you sir thank you for a wonderful session sir am i audible yeah 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 tell ha huh. so if any questions then a learner can directly ask uh, to dwedi sir otherwise we will wind up here डियर लर्नर जदि किसी क्वेश्चन अच्छी डायरेक्टली ओके ओके पीपीटी विल शेयर डोंट वरी आई विल सेंड ऑल द स्टूडेंट ओके दैट इज नॉट ए मैटर आई थिंक सर देयर इज नो क्वेश्चन सो वन क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम माय साइड यस सर व्हाट इज द रोल ऑफ कुकीज इन साइबर सिक्योरिटी actually as i as i have already mentioned that cookies yes. are uh, you know employed for uh, tracking the users activities over a website agar hum ek website mein cookies deploy karte hain hum chahte hain ki if a user is visiting our website what he is visiting actually what are the pages he is going what kind of search you know he is doing so you know to track the user activity inside a uh, on a website basically the web developers use that cookies so tracking user activities in a website for example agar aap hamare website mein osu mein right hand corner mein dikhta hai ki visitors kitna visitor numbers ko display karta hai to we have de designed a cookie you know to track the information of number of visitors agar agar hum wo bhi cookies ek deploy karenge ki wo visitors kon kon sa page ko visit kiya 
और एवरी पेज में क्या वो क्या एक्टिविटी किया है क्या क्या इंफॉर्मेशन वो डाउनलोड किया है क्या अपलोड किया है एनीथिंग सो ऑल दी यूजर एक्टिविटीज इन ए वेबसाइट कैन बी ट्रैक्ट बाई यूजिंग दैट कुकी दैट्स वाई डेवलपर यूज कुकी इन ए वेबसाइट वाई डिजाइनिंग दर वेबसाइट थैंक यू सर ओके सम क्वेश्चन सर दे आर सर प्लीज डिफाइन पेनिट्रेशन टेस्टिंग as i mentioned that penetration testing is a uh, part of ethical hacking penetration testing means define or uh, exploring the vulnerabilities of a system is nothing but penetration testing it involves six phases the first phase is reconnaissance second phase is scanning third phase is uh, gaining access fourth phase is maintaining access fifth phase is clearing the tracks and sixth phase is you know analysis and reporting so we will discuss in detail why uh, why will go in white hacking classes that penetration testing is a vulnerability assessment you know testing where we need to see the security of a system and we try to find out the vulnerabilities of a system and try to fix that vulnerabilities by employing some security measures and techniques okay so this is why we go for the penetration testing next question sir please tell about the vulnerability vulnerability uh vulnerability means for example uh in my system the um as i already give uh, example that uh, my software are not updated just for an example suppose in my system the software that is running in my system are not updated this is one vulnerabilities somebody at remote location may access those software or may i uh, you know uh, inject some malicious content on those software so this is a vulnerability I means anything which is providing uh, access to a something which is residing at a remote location is a vulnerability you will see that open ports suppose you are using internet connection and you have open so many ports so open ports are also a uh, you know interface they are also providing interface for any remote location somebody may access okay so open ports are also one type of vulnerabilities okay so vulnerability issues there are many vulnerability issues from open ports to uh, 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 outdated applications okay outdated softwares so all create a vulnerability problems okay okay sir anand mukhi please mute your mic anand mukhi anand mukhi please mute my mute, mute, mute your mic next question sir how captcha help in avoiding hacking actually captcha the the uh, captcha is given in order to find out who, whether uh, a user basically a user means is a person okay as a living living being is uh, you know uh, is acting as a user or not basically nowadays uh, you know robots are being used or chatbots and robots are being used nowadays basically as a user okay so if a robots is employed as a you know he is dealing with the software applications or web applications okay so in that case a captcha helps to identify whether the user is a living being or a robot or a chatbot okay because a chatbot may you know as a program he may inject your user id and password okay but he cannot find out the captcha okay a, a captcha cannot be distinguished by a robot or a chatbots that's why people have uh, as a counter measure of this uh, robotic attack or the attacks uh, made by these chatbots or robots they always uh, give this uh, captcha information okay so that they can easily identify the activity of a robot or they can easily identify that whether the user is a human being or a robot okay that's why the captcha really helps in that case so nobody can attack Thank through you, the this uh, chatbots or robots okay thank you sir there is a last question uh, what is what is the difference between interruption and interception yeah interruption means uh, just uh, you can say that uh, denial of service attack means uh, if a uh, if a service if a valid user is uh, is being uh, denied to avail a service from a, a server then it is called a interruption okay so interrupting a service okay from being available to a valid user okay so a valid user ko agar hum ek uh, legal uh, server se service ko deny karte hain that is called interruption 
interception means listening of something means if two parties are communicating then if you are listening to their you know communication then it is called interception jisko aap snooping bhi kehte ho snooping ka matlab hai ki aap koi bhi communication ko listen kar rahe ho just access kar rahe ho bas sun rahe ho aap usko interrupt nahi kar rahe ho usko aap modify nahi kar rahe ho us pe aap kuch bhi you know uh, fabrication nahi kar rahe ho only you are listening so this listening is nothing but your interception and it is a uh, you know passive attack basically we are not doing any modification on the data we are only listening the data so this snooping it is also called technically snooping or you can so tell sniffing of the information also so only listening of information is interception and uh, you know is if you are uh, making unable unavailable a service to a legal user then this is called your interruption okay okay sir last question how virtual keyboard helps in password protection look virtual keyboards are a different concept you know basically uh, the the thing uh, your keyboard there is a concept called your key loggers there are key loggers where uh, who, who can store you know who can catch if you uh, if you are clicking your keyboard you know you know the keyboards Uh, then they can catch what you are clicking okay by using virtual keyboard the key loggers cannot work means if you click on your keyboard they they can capture if you use your virtual keyboard they cannot capture what you are clicking through your keyboards so in order to prevent that you know uh, the attacks from the key loggers the virtual keyboard helps in our in our personal uh, in, in our uh, you know uh, to At, uh, to different type of attack which are being done through the key loggers okay sir ha ah, yes yes good good afternoon good sir afternoon, good afternoon sir uh, one question from my side yeah yeah sir hacking is a hacker or hacking is a criminal sir yes sir. why white why white hat hackers or ethical hackers is legal way of hacking sir uh, because as i have already mentioned that the white hat hackers do the hacking activity with the permission of the owner or the administrator that's why it is a legal way because you you are allowing me to hack your system so you cannot complain against me na that's why i am a legal person because you have allowed me to hack into your system your intention is to test the vulnerability to test the any security issues in your system that's why you told me that you please try to hack my system whether you can hack or not because if i can hack mean there are still some vulnerabilities issues some security issues are there in your system so you are allowing me to hack into your system that's why i am a white hat hacker and that's why it is legal yeah i think all questions have been answered thank you sir thank you sir for very smoothly answering all the questions and uh, thank you bhavesh sir and thank you all the learners for listening uh, throughout the session so now we conclude our session here we will meet in next session thank okay. you all thank you thank you very much